How to make a Stuart triple expansion engine run, part 21, the steam test. This Stuart triple expansion engine runs well using compressed air. I need to make sure that it also runs using live steam. The condenser oil trap that I made is finished and ready to go. But for this steam test I will be using the condenser on my model steam engine test plant. And here it is all ready to go. This is the exhaust condenser that I built for this engine. It's designed to fit somewhere in the boat along with the triple expansion engine. I've used some quarter inch brass tubing which can be connected to the engine using silicone rubber tubing. That way the condenser doesn't have to be too close to the engine because to start this engine you need to get your hand around the flywheel. And the last thing that you want is a hot condenser oil trap in your way. Time to light the twin gas burners in the boiler test plant. I'm just checking that they're both lit and yes they are, there's quite a lot of heat coming out of the chimney. All I need to do now is just wait until some steam shows on the gauge and then wait a bit longer until I have sufficient steam to run the engine. Before admitting any steam to this engine I need to fill the Stuart displacement lubricator that's attached to the inlet pipe. And for this, as always, I'm using superheated steam oil, which is very thick and gloopy and perfect for the job. When steam is admitted to the engine, some of it condenses to water inside the lubricator. It's important to open this valve at least one turn. As oil floats on water, the oil is actually pushed out into the steam line and in turn into the engine. As well as the steam cylinder oil, which lubricates the pistons and the valves inside the engine, the lubrication of any external moving parts is also essential. This steam engine test plant that I built has a live steam injector fitted and it needs a special tank because the overflow needs to go into the bottom part of the tank and the water then drains it into a receptacle on the floor. Small injectors in this arrangement are quite fiddly but it's better than moving the pump handle all the time. After around half an hour, the steam pressure is showing on the gauge, it's starting to rise. There isn't really very much pressure here, but I need to start this test with plenty of water in the boiler, so I'm using the injector to pump some more in, and as you can see in no time at all, the water level in the gauge glass starts to rise. During the injection process, the pressure drops, and I need a higher pressure than this to run a triple expansion engine. But I can't just sit here and do nothing. The problem with triple expansion engines, one of the problems, is they take a long time to warm up. I'm admitting steam to the engine very early. There's not enough steam to make it go, but there's enough steam to eventually warm all three cylinders. At the moment, the glands are not very tight on this engine, because to be honest, the engine itself was very tight indeed, and I didn't want to compound the problem by having tight glands so you will see some water leaking from the glands. I'm not opening the drain cocks because they make a real mess. Cylinder drains on small engines tend to leak at the best of times and these are no exception, so I've actually tightened them up. And the idea is you rotate the engine gently but carefully to remove the hydraulic lock. You may have to turn off the steam for this and turn the engine in reverse to clear the water. After a while, the low pressure cylinder starts to get warm, but the intermediate cylinder is too hot to touch and the high pressure cylinder is extremely hot. Don't forget that the temperature of the water is relative to the pressure. It is more than 100 degrees centigrade. And even 100 degrees C is hot enough to burn your fingers. The pressure is rising and suddenly, with 40 pounds of steam in the boiler, the engine starts to run, albeit slowly. This engine isn't fully run in and it's knocking a little bit. Although from my experience, triple expansion engines are generally a bit rattly anyway. I used up a gas canister with not much gas in it, just to initially raise the steam. Now I'm changing it for a tank that has some more gas in it. I open the valve and relight the chimney. With a loud pop, the gas flashes back to the burners and now we nearly have enough pressure to go. There's quite a lot of water on the bench and most of this has come from the piston rod glands and the valve rod glands. 
They really do need tightening up. I can also see some leaks around the top of the high pressure cylinder. I'm going to stop talking for a while to allow you to see and hear the sounds of this engine. The boiler is not fully hot and it doesn't maintain the pressure. So while the boiler is raising more steam, I thought I would remove this fitting which is leaking. This was difficult with my bare hands, it was very hot indeed. By now the boiler has reached its working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch. So I thought it would be a good idea to inject some more water and then leave it until it gets to working pressure for a second time then open the regulator valve and run the engine at a higher pressure. What I'm doing here is using some Loctite 542 sealant to seal this fitting and stop it leaking. Now the engine is hot, one or two of the cylinder head bolts can be tightened slightly, but I need to take care not to shear them off. I'm also tightening another one of the drain taps because it was leaking. Here we go again with much more steam pressure. With the regulator wide open, the engine will run at 40 pounds per square inch. If I start to close the regulator, it will run even slower. So it's running very well. Here it is at 60 psi. And after all that running, the pressure only dropped to just over 50 psi. This is the exhaust condenser oil trap on my model steam engine test plant and the engine's been running for quite a while so it's time to drain it. You just open the top tap and run the engine and the exhaust back pressure forces all the water out along with the oil residue into a bowl below the bench. 
Once it's empty, I close the drain tap. After the steam run, it is vital to clear all water from within the engine and lubricate the internal parts. First of all, I inject copious amounts of WD-40 into the steam inlet, followed by quite a lot of steam oil. This is superheated steam oil, which is only really good for running on steam. Notice how different the engine sounds when it's running on compressed air. Finally, I fitted a union nut and a union cone to the inlet. It's the end of the series. The steam test was successful and the engine should run well for many years to come. It's been an interesting and fiddly job and it's taken many hours to complete. This clip shows the engine connected to the condenser oil trap using a length of silicone rubber tubing. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.